Professionals and Coffee, a volunteer collective that boosts the professional profiles of public relations practitioners through virtual coffee chats. My name is Carolina Salinas, and I'm founder and project manager of Professionals and Coffee. And today I'm so excited to have Vanessa Eaton, Executive Vice President of Proof Strategies. And this is our interviewer of Professionals and Coffee, Sania Chinnis, an international student from the PR and Government Postgraduate Certificate from Seneca College. Welcome both of you to Professionals and Coffee, and I will now uh, turn over the microphone. It is all yours, Sanya. Thank you, Carolina. Um, uh, welcome, Vanessa. We are very excited to talk to you today. Um, for our viewers, I would first like to give a short introduction of uh, Vanessa and her experience in the industry. Uh, so in her 20 years with Proof, uh, she's held several positions, including leading the health and wellness practice, where she specialized in team building, performance and servicing clients in both pharmaceuticals and not-for-profit not health sectors to build and protect brand reputation. As the EVP and innovation lead at Proof, Vanessa leads the account, strategy, digital and creative teams in Proof's Toronto office and works to improve their approaches to meet evolving client needs and solve complex business challenges. Vanessa also co-leads Proof's Can Trust Index Research Initiative. She uses study insights and her extensive communication experience to counsel clients on building trust internally and externally with stakeholders to foster stronger relationships and better business results. So welcome, Vanessa. Thank you for speaking with us. Thank you for having me, Sonia. <laughs> so uh, I would like to start off with uh, uh, by first asking you, what exactly drew you to the field of communications? Your origin story. Yeah, my origin story. Um, <laughs> well, it's funny because I was initially interested in advertising, which is what you uh, are studying as well and, and what you were doing. Um, so my entire family was in advertising, um, generally advertising agencies or running advertising um, for corporate brands. So I grew up in that environment of, of a number of, of ad people. Um, and so I, I went uh, into a program um, for advertising and public relations thinking that I would be focusing on advertising. And then I had exposure to public relations and ended up taking that path instead. And what drew me to more of that public relations path was the, the focus and emphasis on relationships and reputation management. So I ended up through the course that I took, which was at a college, I ended up in the community helping people um, open businesses. I was working with um, the Children's Wish Foundation at a time at the time producing, you know, a video work for them. Uh, from there, I, I went on to advertising sales for a year. So I thought, you know, I'll, I'll give this a shot since my whole family's in the industry. And then I ended up in a PR shop afterwards, which was a small startup for about four years. And then I landed at Proof Strategies. Um, and so by then I knew for sure that PR was my was my direction forward. That's that's a, a great uh, story. Thank you for that. I mean, it's interesting that you mentioned that you sort of uh, went from advertising to PR and back to uh, PR again, right? So uh, as a young professional, because you saw both these worlds, um, were there any expectations that you entered with in the PR industry that were kind of differ, actually different in reality, maybe good or bad uh, regarding dealing with people or uh, just being a PR professional in general? Yeah, um, I don't think I had any expectations that were misaligned. I think as a young professional going in, I did have this image of PR being about a lot of lunches um, and a lot of press conferences, which, you know, way back when, um, there were a lot of press conferences, uh, but what what perhaps I didn't expect was it wasn't all that glamorous at first. You know, when you when you come into your career, you know, I was I was organizing meetings, I was sending out at the time press kits, um, but 
I was really fortunate to get in with a with an agency where I had access to some of the senior people. So I I learned and I I grew quite quickly. Um, and and I, I think what didn't surprise me, but it was more of a pleasant surprise, I guess, is just the amount of people skills that you need in the job. Um, and and really good judgment, lots of good judgment. That's a very valid point. It's interesting that you mention uh, the glamorous nature of uh, <laughs> PR because um, that was exactly what I was sort of worried about because um, I was sort of uh, used to being at in the back when I was in an advertising firm. Uh, so just being a PR professional, I was scared of how I would handle with that part of the persona. Uh, but since I've started studying it, I just think why didn't I do it sooner? Because it's so much about strategizing and relationship building. And it's not at all what I thought. I mean, it's a facet of the PR professional, but it's so much more than that. Yeah. So uh, would you say that if in retrospect, uh, because you went through a career change in advertising and then to PR again, uh, was there something specific that you would change if you would go back, uh, you know, turn the time machine back? Would you change something in the in the starting in the beginning of your career? Yeah, uh, I'm a big fan of reflecting back so we can get better moving forward. But no, I think I think I took the right path. Um, I think I'm in the industry that I'm meant to be in. I'm certainly at the agency that I want to be with. Um, sometimes I wonder, I'll be perfectly honest, I wonder I've been where the agency I'm at now for quite some time. And, and you know, I, I have recruiters and, and headhunters who often come around and ask, when am I going to leave? Um, and I don't, I don't regret any of that. I think that I have grown um, professionally. I, I've had tremendous opportunities in the agency that I'm in. Um, and I formed incredible relationships that are so valuable to me, especially in the last couple of years. Um, we've really needed those relationships. So no, I don't, there's nothing I would have changed. Um, the only thing that I do reflect on, and this is more as a young female in the industry at the time, is um, it took me a while to trust my gut. It took me a while to recognize that not everything I said had to be perfect or right, that I could share opinions and ideas along the way. So that took a little while for me to, to build up that confidence to, to voice my thoughts and ideas and believe in, in those thoughts and ideas. Um, I've learned. I've learned so much. I can talk a lot about what I've learned, but uh, I don't regret a lot. That's a great point. Um, I I know that you specifically mentioned because I I when I while researching I found out that you've in 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 fact spent twenty years at Proof Strategies, and uh, the next question is uh, was a good segue into that that being a woman uh, for twenty years uh, within this industry you've seen this industry change. So how has that changed? sort of happened was there any were there any specific insights you can give us from the can trust index that you've worked on every year with proof yeah well let me see there's so many good things to that to that question so i'll break it down a little bit um how has the industry changed well first is as you mentioned being being a woman i think all kinds of great things have happened i think in the public relations industry we're probably further ahead than other industries in terms of celebrating and, and women and, and having a lot of women in leadership and leadership roles. And I think that's really evolved in the last 20 years. I'm fortunate I work at an agency that absolutely celebrates women. Over 60% of our employees are women. Over 70% are in leadership positions, and we're also a great place to work for women. So I'm I'm really, really fortunate. And then in terms of how the, and the only other thing I'll say about women, I think the change in our industry is that we're recognizing, yes, what everyone brings to the table, but we're also recognizing the unique skills and quality that women bring to the table. Um, 
and especially from from a empathy um and we question things i find women question things quite a bit because sometimes we're not sure but that added questioning that added thinking is 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 actually quite an asset and then in terms of the industry what has changed oh so many things it's always always changing which is what i think keeps me in it keeps me on my toes um but there's big shifts so some of the big shifts is you know, uh, the information, how people are getting their information is changing. So therefore, our industry is changing. Um, how, you know, how people are sharing what they're learning, how they're getting informed, it's it's all changing. Um, trust is changing. Um, unfortunately, it's it's reducing. But who people trust to get information is is also changing. Um, and then, you know, in the past 15 years, everything now is is digital. So it's it's digital channels everywhere. So now, um, whereas public relations before, I think stayed in a lane, the lanes between agencies, between advertising, between public relations, marketing, digital, those lanes are dissolving. So now people are coming in with great ideas that are earning attention and you might be a PR shop, you might be an ad shop. So you really, we've really got to up our, our game on the, on the attention grabbing, uh, grabbing ideas on the, on the creativity level. Um, that's a really big change. And I, I think it will just continue to change as more and more technology advances happen as machines come in and, um, but I think earning attention and knowing how to earn it first, um, earning those relationships and, and driving that action from that is what makes people in our profession. It, it's going to make us quite successful. And I think we're well set up for the future. Yeah, that was uh, that was really insightful because you really tapped into what is the nature of being a PR professional and especially when you spoke of the holistic nature of what it means to be a communications professional now. So do you think that um, it is being the holistic personality being same, same uh, similar? Uh, does it differ for someone who's in, uh, say, a corporate uh, sector and someone who works for a non-profit sector I ask because I know that proof works with the nonprofit sector and uh, for profit as well yeah I think it depends on the goals of each of the organizations um, so for the corporate sector uh, the responsibilities are very much around building a reputation ideally they're around building trust and building those those relationships and and maintaining a reputation um, and a standard within the industry and then often in a corporate setting there's there's an internal side to communications as well where where they have a number of internal um, customers and it's very much um, you know, associated with also employee communications. So there's similarities in in a non in a not for profit. You know, there's some not for profits that we're working with right now um, to in the area of research related to trust to find out how their brands um, rate on on sort of a trust scale and how that relates to fundraising efforts. So that's really interesting. Um, also in not-for-profit organizations, a lot of our clients there, they don't have the same resources or means that someone in a corporate environment would have. So I find that in, in a nonprofit setting, there are people that, um, professionals that are so inspiring because obviously they're there for a reason. They're very connected to a purpose and they're scrappy. One person will often do many things. Um, and I find that there's less barriers or limitations at times. So you can come up with some pretty fabulous ideas. Um, and, and the, you know, when we work on these, uh, in these areas, they're very meaningful, generally given the cause that they're associated with. Wow. Thank you for the, uh, the entire, uh, sort of a picture that you've, uh, painted for us of the difference between a profit, uh, for profit and non-profit, uh, organizations. Um, what our viewers would also 
uh, be interested in knowing a little bit more is uh, specifically about proof as well. Um, because you've spent uh, so many years growing in that organization, uh, we'd love to know what exactly is it that uh, makes proof stand out in the industry uh, in terms of culture, in terms of opportunities. I know that you uh, touched a little bit on the diversity and uh, the role that women play as leaders there. Uh, but for a young professional too, are there any, uh, is there something that makes proof stand out uh, in terms of opportunities? Uh, well, I think so. I, obviously, I'm, I'm biased. I've, I've been at Proof for a long time. What stands out? I have to think about it from an industry perspective. Um, for me, culture it is a biggie. So we have a very good award-winning best workplace culture. And the reason why we have that culture and, and how we've set this up is based on our, our founder, Bruce McClellan, who's, who's an amazing man. Um, but he started Proof to create a great place to work that also does great work. So because we're, we're independent, we're Canadian owned, we don't have the pressures where we need to report into a head office, you know, in, in, in another country where, you know, we can't say no to business or we can't say no to an RFP or we have a hiring freeze, which means, you know, the people that we have need to work extra hard, even though they're really tired. We don't have those same pressures so we can carve our own path which creates um a wonderful culture we are not a culture where big egos live that's just not us it, it just never ever works a proof um so people come in and they have to be able to collaborate um and they and respect is really really big really really big at proof and and we're working very hard on on in, um, inclusion but we've also been We've always been a very inclusive workplace. Um, so to me, that culture sets our tone. And then the second piece to that would be our people. Phenomenally talented, but also just wonderful people. Um, and, and that makes, you know, we spend so much time with the people that we work with. You want to work with really great people. So I learn, I learn even in my position all day long from the people. Um, and I know that new people coming into our agency, whether they're coming in in a starting role or even more senior, they're always impressed by our people. And then the last thing I would say is the caliber of our work. It's we have we are very much dedicated to excellence. So we set a very high bar, um, but it's a bar that we can attain. And so um, it's inspiring, I think, for people to see how high that bar is. Yeah, that's true. I mean, um, the stress that you've put upon uh, the importance of people and the culture at Proof uh, also sort of uh, brings me to the next question that I want to really ask you is that how do you then judge a fresh graduate who doesn't have that much experience on their resume? Uh, if all of us have the same degrees, all of us have, say, the same two or three months of internship, then what is that thing that makes uh, that graduate uh, sort of stand out when you see yourself as uh, proof in like a such a you know culture driven and people driven place yeah it's it's such a good question and it's a bit of a hard one to answer because one when we meet people out of school and and we do a lot um, with different schools and and we're associated with the CPRS so we do a lot of support we, we talk to a lot of students um, so the first thing we think about is how hard everyone worked to get there, right? And we understand how intimidating these situations are, especially if it's your first job interview. So the what we typically look for, and this is more, I'll speak to my own, my own um, personal uh, opinion and experience, but I think that students fresh out of school can stand out in a couple of ways. One, they do their research before going into an interview. So they, they know who they're talking about. They understand the background. They understand the background and, and a little bit about the company. And what demonstrates that is the questions that they ask. So we're an agency called Proof Strategies. It was all born from a number of different things, but one of them is about curiosity and, and being um, and, and asking, asking good questions. 
So we need to see people come in being very curious and asking good questions. And the questions that they ask show us whether they've done their research or not. And I think it's also important for students coming in to understand and be able to articulate what they're interested in, what they're looking for, um, because then it shows me that they're also interviewing us to see if we're the right spot. And I think I think that's always impressive. Um, there's a number of other things, but I know we have a time limit, so I won't I won't keep going. But but that's a big one. Then the other one is follow up. It shocks me. It actually surprises me how many people that we speak to. And they don't follow up afterwards to say either thank you for your time or, you know, here's a great article I saw about what we were just talking about or, you know, I went and researched this and, you know, just something. Um, so that follow up is is also, in my opinion, part of the interview. Thank you so much. I'm sure uh, uh, a lot of our professionals who are watching this are going to note down these uh, <laughs> points for future reference. Um, a last question that I'd want to ask you is, what is the best bit of advice you'd have for someone uh, looking to become a communications professional or a PR professional in this industry? Mm. Well, one... Um, it's an excellent industry to get into because I don't think it's going to be going away with technology. It's, it's only be going, to, going to become more important. So I think the advice is we need a balance of hard and soft skills. And finally, soft skills are having its day, especially in the last couple of years. Um, so I think you need that balance. Things like creativity, creativity. Um, and curiosity, empathy, compassion are really going to round people out. And I think, I think that those are important skills that can also be learned and built. So it's not just about coming in and, you know, being a writer, unless you're coming in as a copywriter. Um, and the second thing I think I would say is um, that the world of communications now is so vast that you can come in if you and you can specialize now so you can come in into a public relations agency or a communications agency and be a creative or a copywriter or you can be in accounts or you so there's all kinds of different specialties now so i think it's good to do your research and understand what you're interested in um and come in, try to get a lot of experience and then look at where you might specialize moving forward. That was, that was maybe like more than one piece of advice, but. <laughs> no, that was perfect. I'm suddenly going to go back to the drawing board now and <laughs> figure out my strategy. <laughs> um, I think that was uh, it for me. Thank you so much, Vanessa, for your thank time you. and knowledge and your advice. Uh, yeah, Carolina, thank you. That was all from my end. Thank, thank you. you. No, thank you. Thank you, Vanessa, for your guidance. And, and Sanya, you did an excellent job. Con congratulations for your interview. Um, are there any social media handles that you, Vanessa, and Sanya would like to share for our audience? Where can we find you? Oh, my goodness. I haven't memorized them. But if you <laughs> if you look up Proof Strategies, you'll find them. Okay, awesome. We're uh, and, <laughs> and what about you, Sanya? Yeah, you can find me at Sanya Chitness on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you want to. I also have my portfolio very easy uh, on uh, just Google away. So that's it. And I'll link it uh, in the comment section as well. Okay. Uh, well, thank you, everyone. And see you on the next Professionals and Coffee Chat. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to our social media channels, which are in the description below this video. And please join us to do your own virtual coffee chat like Sanya just did today. Thank you and bye. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much.